Hey guys, it's Steph. Welcome back to the Cantina. Uh, wanted to um, do a live uh, stream today. Um, did not expect to be talking about this. Uh, everybody knows how much I love The Godfather. Uh, everybody knows how much uh, I love the actors in the movie. Uh, and, and Coppola and Al Ruddy and that nut Bob Evans. And, um, but I want to talk a little bit about something that's really near and dear to my heart. Uh, and that's James Caan. James Caan is one of those, uh, movie stars who always seemed to have a place in the world. Uh, his characters, uh, from The Author in Misery to um, Santino, Corleone, and Brian Piccolo have always kind of stuck out as tour de forces. Um, I have to say that James Caan wasn't like any other actor. He didn't look like any other actor. He didn't feel like any other actor. He was not a subtle guy. This was a man, okay? And the reason why he did, he, he felt so right in um, Brian's song, in my opinion, is because he resembled those football players from decades ago uh, that didn't make any money playing football, right? I'll tell you a little bit about back in the 60s. Vince Lombardi was the coach and general manager of the Green Bay Packers, the GOAT, greatest football coach ever lived. Um, and, you know, you could look at a lot of other, it was a, it was an era where coaches, managers, and, and that kind of, the leadership was in the organization. Okay. Uh, and, and if you looked at the guys playing, football back then. They didn't look like they do now. The, 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 the players that play now look like oversized, steroid-riddled monsters. Okay, they don't look like guys that were playing, you know, six, you know, six months a year. The other six months they worked at car dealerships and owned brewery distributorships and stuff like that, okay? Um, and that pretty much sums up who Brian Piccolo was. And the movie Brian Song is about how he uh, was was great friends with Gail Sayers. Gail Sayers, played by Billy D. Williams in the movie, probably one of the fastest football players that ever played the game. Um, if you ever read anything, I'm a Packer fan, if you ever read anything that former Packers like Willie Davis, Willie Wood, the guys who played on, on defense, the guys who played on special teams, said about Gail Sayers. <clears throat> he was the fastest man they ever had to play against. And he was slippery. He could run. He wrecked his knee, like they often do. Guy, little guy, I mean, what, they're not... Guys like that are never big, okay? So when you watch it, when you watch them play... They can get in and out of trouble real fast. They get hit. They get tripped up. And they're going full speed. That's going to wreck their knee. That's what happened to Gail Sayers. Brian Piccolo uh, contracted cancer and died. He and Gail Sayers are best friends. And the movie Brian's Song was about that. Very sad movie. Um, a very... Uh, uh, It's hard to explain, but when you walk away, you're going to be crying. Okay, I cried. And again, the reason why James kind of worked so well as Brian Piccolo is because he resembled that blue-collar, tough guy who just went out and threw himself all over the place every Sunday, you know, in professional ball. Okay, that's what that is. 
So then we get into, you know, he, he made Westerns, Misery, but my favorite that he ever, that he made ever and ever, my favorite, has to be The Godfather. He played Santino Corleone, the oldest brother, the guy who was going to end up being the, the, the Don, uh, the Corleone crime family. And he was a hothead, loudmouth hothead. Uh, didn't exactly follow his father's rules on the family. He had affairs. Godfather 3 comes out, and Vincent Man Mancini is his son. Okay. The, the not very attractive girl that is uh, one of Connie's bridesmaids is, in fact, the mother of Vinny. Okay. And um, that's kind of, you kind of watch it going. Uh, so Sonny, he's a man of action. He's aggressive. He, he doesn't have an off button. In fact, when Salazzo goes to visit the Don and propose um, getting into partnership with his heroin distribution, the Don says uh, no. And the reason why the Don said no was because, rightly so, the politicians and judges and the cops that basically got paid off uh, by the Don um, wouldn't be so kind because it's one thing to look at a harmless vice like gambling, Shylock money, uh, even maybe even a brothel. I don't know if, if the Corleones ran those, but there, but that was a thing that the mafia did. Okay. That the reason why luckily Chiano got, uh, arrested and thrown in prison was because he ran a high class brothel. Okay. And you know, he got like 35 years in prison. It's like, but the politicians and judges look at the, look at that as victimless crime and they'd leave it, they'd leave it alone. However, that being said, um, it appears to me and being said, you know, Corleone was very skittish about getting into something that would bring a lot of, of law dogs down on them. And that's the illegal narcotics trade. Okay, now, the, the Don has uh, Tom Hagen saying, you know, there's a lot of money to be made in this. And Sonny then speaks up, basically saying, you mean to tell me that you could, you would guarantee our safety? Whatever he said. At the end of it, Don, the Don looks at him and goes, Santino, don't you ever let anybody outside the family know what you're thinking. Okay. Problem with Santino. Even the Don says after he's, after he, he's killed, Santino was a bad Don. The reason why is because he didn't stop to think. One of the reasons why Michael is so effective is that he watches people. He reads the room like his father did. Okay. That is one thing I think everybody on this, everybody, at least on, on my subscribers, needs to start learning how to do that. Sit back, react, relax, watch what people are, are, are doing. Do not say anything unless you have something impertinent to say. But don't let the people you're negotiating with know what you're really thinking. Ever. Ever. There's a scene in the offer where Ruddy and Evans are talking with Charlie Bluthorn. I think uh, uh, Jack Ballard and um, uh, Barry Lepidus. And after those guys, they all leave. And Ruddy's throwing a, t a tantrum. And Evans is like, no, 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 no. What you think happened is not what happened. Learn to read a room. And he was right. Because I didn't see anything that Ruddy was upset about. We have the same thing going on with our fans, with the fandom. Okay. You know, Kennedy's name. You know, um, Pablo's name. Calm down. 
All right? Look, listen to what people like Cameron are saying. Listen to me. Listen to, to Andre at Midnight's Edge. What, don't let that garbage um, trigger you, okay? The reason why Sonny is so popular is that he's a hothead. The reason why Sonny was a bad Don is because he's a hothead, all right? He didn't think not to say anything about what he was thinking. He didn't think about keeping that back. He just went Bleh, like that. And while you're watching the movie, you realize that Salazzo and the rest of them are basically drawing him out. Then he gets into it with his brother-in-law, Carlo. Now, Carlo is played by Gianni Russo. Gianni Russo is, he's one of those guys who literally lives the Mandela effect, okay? Um, he likes to brag he slept with Marilyn Monroe, but if you see The Godfather, that was what, made in 1972, 1970? He likes to, it's like, all right, you slept with Marilyn Monroe. How old were you, 14? Um, he's got stories about befriending Frank Sinatra. Frank Sinatra wouldn't have anything to do with him. You know, Dean Martin wouldn't have anything to do with him. Um, you know, John Gotti, it's like, okay, sure. On and on and on and on. Really, he's hard to explain. He's a character. And the guy playing him in the offer is literally playing a cartoon because Gianni Russo is a cartoon. You know, I'm going to bring him up today. I'm going to be on uh, Drinks with Dee Dee, and that'll be on uh, tomorrow. They'll upload that uh, podcast, and I'll put it here so you guys can watch it. Um, Gianni Russo is a cartoon. When you see him in real life, he's a cartoon. It's the only way I can describe him. You know, none of this stuff he says happened happened, okay? The guy that plays him, he goes, hand to God, like that. It's like, oh my God, it's Gianni Russo. Uh, you know, and uh, Juno Temple, who plays Betty McCart, is horrified by him. Because she, she, he's an asshole. Okay, he's just a, it's really, he's, he's hard to explain. So he gets the part of Carlo, the douchebag. Okay, and, and he plays the douchebag well. And he doesn't have a lot of speaking parts. He basically is there to beat the shit out of Talia Shire. And actually he did hit her. All right, and... Coppola finds out, Al Ruddy finds out, and Ruddy goes, and this is the show, I don't know how they did it, but I'm betting this happened. Because that, that beat down, that beat down was real. When you watch it in the movie, he, James Caan really beat the freaking shit out of him. Russo deserved it, because he gave Talia Shire a black eye. She's the sister of Francis Ford Coppola, and they're Italian. Okay, um, so he tells Ruddy goes, I need, to, I need you to do me a favor. And, you know, James Conn's like, whatever, boss. And then they're out there, they're watching the scene and action. And yeah, 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 he beat the shit out of him. Okay, and to me, that's one of my all-time favorite moments ever in a movie, to know that, a guy that hurt a woman got his ass beat down about an hour later for it. And apparently he didn't realize at the time that it was in retail. It was, it was justice for Talia, but yeah. Um, Jimmy kind of had no problem, no problem at all taking that out on, uh, on uh, Gianni Russo, Russo deserved it. Um, we go into Misery, he plays the writer, and what a creepy movie. There's a reason why I call Ray Lowe's, um, 
you know, what was her name? God, I can't remember Kathy Bates' name in it. But that's, you know, you're, I'm, I'm your biggest fan. All right. I mean, that's, and he was awesome in that movie. Awesome. Kathy Bates is great as the overweight, uh, sort of, you know, uh, lonely, uh, loner woman, the hermit chick, okay, who is obsessed with these books and, uh, you know, really uh, is, is pissed off when she finds out that he is going, that, that uh, uh, Misery Chastain was going to be killed, okay, killed off. So she forces him to write the novel all over again to uh, fix what he broke, okay? Um, it was written by Stephen King. I think it's probably the only decent thing he ever wrote. I'm not a fan of, D of Stephen King. Um, he's an angry, bitter, overweight, left-wing hack. And I don't think his books were ever that good. I don't think he was ever... Um, that great of a writer, okay? So uh, I don't, you know, I can't really speak as uh, to it like I want to, but, um, you know, the movie was, was great. Uh, kind of reminded me of kind of an offshoot of The Shining because it's in the Colorado mountains in the middle of fucking nowhere and it all happens, just like the Overlook Hotel abandoned for the year. In the wintertime, Jack Nicholson and Shelley Long are dealing with the haunted hotel, okay? Um, it, it reminded me of that, the, the isolation. And Kathy Bates' character is isolated because she wants to be. All right, she's not isolated because nobody wants her around. She's that isolated because she's a weirdo. She really is. And because she prefers to be by herself. Um, but it's a great movie. And, uh, you know, a lot of my friends in the movie business actually knew James Caan and really liked him and said he was a great guy, stand-up dude. So, uh, and, we, you know, we just lost Ray Liotta. I mean, you know, James Caan was 82, so I can... I get it. Ray Liotta was a bit was a bit younger, so I don't get that. But and we're gonna hear. Um, I'm gonna be on uh, drinks with Dee Dee in oh an hour, uh, but the show's not gonna be posted till tomorrow. So I don't want to waste all my all my energy uh, here. But I just wanted to put this out, and um, you know. Uh, there was a great article about Bob Chapek in The Hollywood Reporter. So I'm probably going to read that and maybe come back live later and talk about that. But cheers to James Kahn. I'll see you guys around the galaxy.